Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be decluttering my garage and using some of that beautiful old scrap wood to make a few projects. This little garage is packed pretty full. I've got a bunch of thrifted items there on the right that we will go through at a later time, but today we're working on my wood stash. I've got some old salvaged wood, and y'all, I will grab wood from just about anywhere. If it's beautiful and old and weathered, it's mine. So we might have just found an old piece of wood. Hold on to that for me, pipies. I spotted this piece recently on a Jeep ride and grabbed it up. I knew it would be perfect for some decor boards. Using a pencil, I just drew a line for a handle, cut that out with my jigsaw, then I flipped it to the other side to mirror that image. That will give you an even handle on both sides. Using my jigsaw, I cut that side out, and then I ran my jigsaw down the edge to cut some little jagged sides to make it look older. I rounded out the bottoms, and that gives me the basic shape of my decor board. Now this one broke as I was cutting it, but no worries. If you watched me before, y'all know I love to make these old broken decor boards with faux repairs. If you've been following me for a while, I've got a ton of videos on these boards. I will link them below. Once they were cut, I used DIY clear wax to freshen up the wood and a little bit of DIY dark decrepit dust along the edges to help those fresh cuts blend into the weathered wood. On this one, I used some old strapping and just used a staple gun on the back. That way you can tuck in some floral. And on the other one, I used an old rusty piece of metal to give it a repair. I did use some wood glue to help hold that wood together as well. What do y'all think? Which one is your favorite? Comment down below. Whenever I have too many of these 1x4s, I love to make little shelf sitting signs. I grabbed Weathered Wood and Prairie Gray by DIY Paint. After a nice a thick coat of the paint has dried, you have DIY Weathered Wood and Prairie Gray. So these are amazing neutral colors. Pulls a little more gray, pulls a little more brown both very pretty. Now I'm going to do just some very simple shelf sitting signs with these little pieces of scrap wood. They look great tucked into your booth and a little vignette. They look great up on the shelf um, next to picture frames and floral greenery. You name it, you can set them anywhere. And of course you could put a little hanger on them and add these to a wall collage as well. I've got some brand new stencils here by Jamie Ray Vintage. This is the Main Street Minis and the Apothecary Label Pack 2. Both of these are available over on my site now in the JRV Stencil Collection, and I will link them down below. I'm using the new DIY Cottage Colors, which is a collaboration with DIY Paint and Jamie Ray Vintage. DIY Cottage Color is an all-in-one paint. It has a built-in sealer, it's self-leveling, there's no need for an extra sealer, and it's pretty extra durable. Now, with that being said, it is intended for indoor use. If you're gonna be using it outdoors, it's recommended to use an extra top coat. And if I were to use it on, say, a tabletop or a nightstand top, a dresser top, I would be using an extra top coat for extra durability. It is a little bit thinner than the traditional DIY clay-based paint, so keep that in mind when you're stenciling. You're gonna want your brush even drier than normal. And I feel more comfortable stippling with it. I haven't got great results from swirling yet. So when you're stenciling, I'm getting just a tiny bit of paint and I'm actually offloading most of that paint over onto the drop cloth, leaving me with a very dry brush. And then I'm coming in with just a little dabbing motion, a little stippling here to fill in my stencil. The JRB stencils are super thick and durable. They are made to be used over and over again. So if you are a reseller, 
Um, they're great to purchase because you will get a lot of use out of them. They're great for everyday use as well. If you're new to stenciling, they make it super easy. I don't have a lot of patience. These are very forgiving. Good brushes are very important when you're stenciling too. I've got my half inch brush here and then I use my 3 8 inch brush on these smaller stencils later on. For the cottage colors, I'm using linen white and also the haint blue. Now, even though it has a built-in sealer, the cottage color paint distresses beautifully. I've got myself some 220 grit sandpaper. You don't want any higher grit than that or you're going to really leave scratch marks. But I run that 220 across my stenciled paint and it distresses beautifully. In fact, you can see the brush strokes from the colors I used underneath as I sand through and it gives it such an authentically worn look. It just distresses beautifully. I used some 120 grit sandpaper on my electric sander here around the edges just to give it a more weathered distressed edge and now we will take them inside to seal the paint. Even though the cottage color has a built-in sealer, the DIY clay paint, the weathered wood and prairie gray does not. So I will use my clear wax to seal up the rest of these signs. Notice as I am applying the wax that paint is darkening back up. Don't worry, as it dries, it will lighten again. This is called the wax freakout factor. Sometimes it may appear a little blotchy. Give it 24 hours, it will even back out. The DIY wax is super buttery smooth, so all I use is a chip brush and it goes on perfectly. Now I have the white wax and I'm using just a little tiny bit on this chip brush and giving a weathered wood a finish. And I just love this white wax. I use it on so many projects. I'll hold them up side by side so you can see the difference. So whether you're decorating your home, maybe you need some easy projects for a show or market coming up, you have a booth that you need signs for, what a cute little quick project. Comment below which one is your favorite. For the third project, I am using my miter saw here and making some cubes and rectangles. They're going to make some cute little planter boxes. For the cubes, the width of the board was three and a half inches, so I cut the length of them three and a half inches as well, and then a little two inch section to go in the middle that will make my nice little square cubes. I'm not going to put any bottoms on these, you'll see how I finish them off later. For the rectangles, I just used the length of the board that I had and cut three and a half inch ends as well. And you can see some of these boards were already painted and stained, so I will leave them as is. Once all of my pieces were cut, I used my pneumatic nail gun to put them together. Be very careful, make sure your fingers are out of the way. I've got my safety goggles on and take your time, make sure everything is lined up. I offset the rectangle boards just a little bit. You can find super easy plans for these on Pinterest or I could do a more elaborate video. If y'all need one, just let me know. Once they were put together, I got some 220 grit sandpaper, I sanded them down, and then I used this beautiful crinoline color by DIY Paint 
didn't record that clip, but here's the color on the next project. Little sneak peek for you. Now it's time for the Apothecary Labels 2. These little tiny label stencils are super cute. Now I'm not going to lie, I was worried about how tiny they were. Was I going to get a crisp image? I took my time, I used my 3 8 inch stencil brush and DIY black velvet paint and the image came out very well. Now. If you are a more patient stenciler than me, you're going to get an even better result. There were a couple little spots where I got just a little juicy with my paint, but I am going to be distressing these back anyway, so it does not matter. You can see right there on the M, it got a little bit thick, but no worries. And I love how these fit so perfectly on these little tiny boxes. Like I said, a little distressing with some 220 grit and they look authentically old. Now I didn't put any bottoms on these. You could stick some floral foam in or you could put like a glass jar in there with a real piece of um, floral. That would be just gorgeous. Or, you know, store paintbrushes, pencils, whatever you want. Possibilities are endless. Last project, I'm using this wood bit for my drill and these four by four pillars. These were little scrap pieces I had left over from the industrial corpels I built. Taking your time and being very careful, we're going to drill holes down into these pillars. I went the length down on the tall ones, uh, about three inches down on the mid-sized ones, and about an inch down on the short ones. Now you could put floral in these, I put some paintbrushes in them, pencils, whatever you want. Leave me a comment below, what would you store in these? Now on the green set, they had some authentic chippy paint, but my raw cuts on top didn't match. So I used some clear wax. Now I've got dark decrepit dust. And then I grabbed my green plant lady uh, making powder. And this is just the perfect combo to make my pillars all match the authentic paint on the mid-sized one. This set of two didn't match, so I painted them both with a nice a thick coat of DIY crinoline. Of course, I've got my Klingon brushes that you all know I love. And I just put on one thick coat, did a little bit of sanding, distressing, and they were a perfect a chippy finish. The last set got a grain stencil and I did seal the white ones up here with clear wax. The grains set did not need sealed since I used the cottage color paints. If y'all love these kind of wood project videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up so I know and share this video out with a friend who may be a little afraid to try using power tools or really get into these wood projects. They don't have to be super complicated and you can make a beautiful custom piece. Be sure to subscribe and hit the little notification bell next to the subscribe button. If you click that to all, YouTube will let you know every time I upload a new video. Till next time, I'll see y'all later. Bye friends. Get over here. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be de-stashing 
my garage, not these stashing, these stashing, decluttering. Bye.